Uh, we're going to talk the great divide. And so we have representing uh, three corners of this debate. Uh, you've met Ivan. Ivan runs uh, Tech Bar, which is a retail repair organization. Jessa, or I'm sorry, we'll, we'll go this way. John, uh, John Bumstead is from Chicago. He does uh, refurb work on MacBooks primarily. And he focuses, you see in the photo here, he has piles and piles of MacBooks. I have all of these wonderful photos. Um, I, I'm not going to pump too much social media here, but all of you, if you're on Instagram, have to follow John on Instagram. He has the single best Instagram feed I've ever seen. It's glitch art. So, uh, briefly, I, I, I second this advertisement. <laughs> briefly, tell us about your Instagram feed. Um, well, I, I, I see so many hundreds of broken screens and also so many GPU defects that now and then I just see one and think, oh, that's kind of pretty. So I'll take pictures and um, I'll, I'll, I like to put, uh, you know, a broken screen up against the GPU defect and then cycle, you know, images behind them, just kind of do all sorts of combinations. So, you know, it's just something I do when I get bored. Repair is right. art. It's marvelous. That's awesome. Yeah, it is cool. So John is representing the refurbishing side of things, and and then you have uh, all met Jessa Jones. So Jessa is has been doing a lot of repairs, and you're here on this panel to argue that we shouldn't fix anything ever. That's, That's right. That's been water damaged. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, no water damage. No water damage. No water damage for the sake of the device. No. Okay. So to kind of uh, stake out the positions here. Um, John, why don't you start out and tell us a little bit about why you don't want to run a retail repair shop? Um, well, I mean, should I start with the intro to the, to the oh, business? Sure, yes. Okay. Tell us about your business okay. and then you can say yes, absolutely. Um, so what I do is I, I buy thousands of broken laptops from a handful of electronics recyclers. Um, so on the one side of the business, I, I get you know, those thousands of laptops in the mail, then I repair and refurbish those. Then I sell them uh, wholesale to a handful of um, wholesale customers um, who in turn sell to end users. So they take the burden of dealing with end users away from me. Um, you know, I, I think the refurbishing model is a good choice because people tend to default to the end user facing model. They def default to the, the, the repair for hire model. Um, whereas in the refurbishing model, you don't sell a service, you sell a computer. Um, you know, and there are, there are a lot of benefits to, uh, to, to doing that. Um, you know, because I have good relationships on both sides with, with my recyclers and my customers, and I've been dealing with them all for three, five, seven years, um, I'm able, able, like I said, to just cut out the general public entirely. You know, I don't have my calendar littered with, you know, dozens of deadlines. Um, I don't have to deal, deal with tech support. I don't have to deal with just any of the stuff that you deal with dealing with end users. I absolutely refuse to deal with end users. I will not sell a single computer by itself because it's just not worth my time because I sell 20, 30 computers in boxes of 10 a day and as soon as you get one guy knocking on your door, it turns into a third of the day dealing with one person. So um, another aspect that's, that's, that's great about being a refurbisher is you own what you work on. Um, you, you, when, when those computers come in the door, I, um, you know, I own those computers. I can repair those computers. I can put them on the shelf. I can scrap them for parts. I can mess them up, and it doesn't matter if I mess them up because it, you know it's not like someone was depending on me to get them the machine for Monday for a presentation. So I'll just say, oh well, you know, scrap that one and move on to the next. Um, but the most important thing is that I can choose to do the repairs that make sense. I don't have to do a repair because someone wants it. I choose to do the repairs that make sense in terms of money, uh, in terms of my time. Um, so that's very valuable to be able to, you know, sort of determine your own your own schedule and your own path that way. Um, let's see, specialization and optimization. Um, there's a saying that um, if you take on the world, the world always wins. But if you take on a very small piece of the world. Uh, you can become a master at that. You can be 10 times better at that than anyone. You can be 10 times faster at that than anyone. Um, you know, in my case, I, I work with Apple laptops. I think that's the best product to deal with, honestly. Um, you know, and, and because you specialized in something small, you can then optimize that. 
you can uh, turn it around as quickly as possible. You have a thousand of that machine on hand, so you don't have to buy parts. I never buy parts because I scrap machines because I only deal with a few machines and I have thousands. Um, you know, the smallest unit of our businesses is the individual transaction. And so optimizing that transaction, making it as high quality and as quick as possible, and then cranking it out as many times as you can to make as, as much money as you can, you know, that's, that's, that's very important. And with the refurbishing model, it's, it's, uh, you, you can do that. It's a model that is, is designed to make that work. Um, I, I guess the last thing I'll say is, um, the refurbishing model, if you're doing it right, it doesn't require any marketing, um, and you don't need a retail presence um, because I'm not you know, welcoming the general public in, so I don't need an interface to them. Um, in addition, I don't need to prove anything to them. I don't need to show them my workspace, um, none of that. You know, I work out of my house. My house is basically a factory, but I work out of my house. Um, and you don't really need marketing. If you have your relationships on your uh, supplier side and on your customer side, um, you get to a point where you're at capacity. And you know, I turn down suppliers, I turn down customers, you know, as opposed to a normal business where you know, it's just marketing, 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 trying to get those one-off sales through the door constantly in order to keep your business alive. Um, in the wholesale um, refurbishing world, you just want a few good customers who are repeat customers to the tune of thousands and thousands of machines. And I find that to be a lot easier. So that's, that's basically the rundown. And, and that's why you should refurbish. And that's the end of this workshop. <laughs> John wins the debate. <laughs> no, this is it. You bring up a lot of compelling points. And all of, I think uh, a lot of the points that you bring up are pain points for you. Yes, they are. Um, if you've if you've read the book or heard anything about lean startup, like that's a lean, that's a lean business. It's hyper low expenses, good revenue. It's a good model. Yeah, it is a good model. I just didn't do it that way because I didn't. You're losing the debate. I know. <laughs> I, I, I know. <laughs> like I, I met John and I was like, wait, what do you do? Like this is great. Why doesn't everybody do this? He's like, no, no, because I got this down to a science and I do these three computers. And I was like, no, but you should do ten computers. He's like, no, no, these three computers are perfect. Like. So yeah, ever since I met him, we've kept in touch, and, and it's a fascinating business model. I guess for, for me, it's a harder business to scale. So my, my business, I own a retail store. I don't know, most of you are probably in the, in the morning session, but I own a retail uh, chain of stores, and I also own an IT consulting business. So our retail business um, obviously has a, 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 a much more, I guess, I perceive to be a larger potential revenue stream because everybody's my potential customer. Um, and, and I think that figuring out a way to drive them and that marketing is certainly a, a challenge, but it's actually not that much of a challenge. Generally, if you put up a, a retail store, talking about with Chris earlier, if you put up a retail store in the right location, people will come. They just show up to your front door because people need things fixed. Um, but I think that they both internally have, have challenges. We definitely are challenged with bringing more people into the door on a regular basis. Um, we are dealing with the end user um, but ultimately, our business can scale at the level of a you break, I fix, or a CPR, where it can be a tens of millions of dollar business, where I'm sure it can also be at a, a refurbishment model, and it does. There are people here that have such businesses, but it, de it depends also the, the quality of life you want to lead, right? De I think that you've built a business that, that does allow you a certain quality of life and is very lean, and uh, I'm admittedly a little jealous. <laughs> but but there's also a personality difference here, right? Where I think I, I think that John's personality is one where he's not a customer <laughs> service oriented guy, and that's okay, right? And but but you're going to be. I mean, it seems like this is something. Yeah. I mean, you were very passionate earlier today when you were talking about the importance of service. And yeah, and I'm, well, I'm sure John gives good customer service. He just does get it to a lot less people. I I like the client interaction. I like the end user interaction. I get a lot of. I get a kick out of creating a promoter of my business and that that person brings more people into my business. That's, a, that's an exciting feeling when someone believes in you and believes in your business model and believes in your brand enough so that they'll tell somebody else about it. And, and if you are able to create a, a wildfire effect of that, um, you end up with companies like Apple. You end up with companies that have such a strong brand presence that they can command whatever price they want, make you wait as, as many lines as you want because you want that product from that person. So 
we've been able to build that reputation in our community for our store. Um, the, the after I'm just having a discussion uh, at lunchtime, but it, it also depends on the market. There are people in my market that will not pay my prices, no matter how good or how amazing I am. Um, and at the same time, there are people that will only come to my store because it's my store and it's our brand. So I think that that fragmentation creates some difficulty in running a retail model, but, but you have, I think, longer term potential for scaling that business because of the, the model that it is. Okay, fair enough. So we've heard two sides on this. Jessa has been fixing uh, boards for a while. Uh, and there's a certain category of boards that you prefer not to fix. Yes, um, but first, John sucks because what he's doing is super boring. Come on, did you see the picture with the like thousands of stacked laptops that are all the same? <laughs> what a snooze. I mean, wouldn't you just rather kill yourself than have to stand there and take the same motherboard out of the same laptop like a thousand times? I, I, I couldn't stand it. I, I, would, I would absolutely die. You know, uh, and then you suck, obviously, because um, because customers suck, man. And, and you know, I heard you in the first session where you're like, um, yeah, you know, like a douchebag customer comes in and he's messed up his, his, his phone and you're going to replace his device, even though you know you guys didn't do anything wrong. That would like kill you inside, you know, like, you know, like the, just the, the oh, that would drive me crazy because customers are customers, you know. Now, what's really awesome <laughs> is data recovery, because everybody loves data recovery. You know, I mean, data recovery has got the best part of customers. I mean, you know, it's it's customers are great when you're making them happy, and there's nothing that makes anyone happier than for you to give a mother back the pictures of her baby from the phone that you know somebody spilled coffee on. That's like a life's moment of, of greatest joy, second only to actually having that baby, is getting <laughs> the pictures back. And you're getting to, to make those calls. Like I love sitting down and writing the, it's good news, you know, and, and, and it's so fantastic. And then how much are they gonna pay? Whatever you want to charge, you know, like the, there is no like, well, I could go buy a new phone, you know, well, you can't really go back and recreate those first steps pictures, you know, so, so, uh, you know, data recovery is, is, is so much fun, you know, because you're dealing with customers, but you're making them happy. And with a no, fi no data, no fee model, you know, if you're, if you're not able to recover the data, you know, then you're not charging them anything. So they're really just, you know, you tried your best, they appreciate your, your efforts, they know they kind of send it to the right place, and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're happy, and they'll send you something else for you to, to try again later, you know. And, uh, you know, so I, I absolutely love data recovery, and at the same time, you know, I don't do, uh, for the sake of the phone, water damage repair, you know, and that's sort of the same thing with refurbishing. You know, when you said, you know, your, your customers, you, you own the device, which is true, but if you're going to refurbish it, it has to, like, work like all of it. You know, like, this laptop needs to work um, so that it has a display and it has keyboard function and blah, 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 blah. And when you put it all back together and then, ah, uh, this port doesn't work. Well, that's your problem because you own it. If it's a repair customer, or a data recovery customer especially, if the Wi-Fi doesn't work, who cares? You know, I already, I already got the data. You know, if it's a repair, you know, where they, they own the device, you know, then you're fixing a primary problem. Secondary problems, it's their, their problem. You know, they can also pay for the secondary problem to be fixed or not. For you, it's all your problem because you own it, right? So obviously, data recovery is best and, <laughs> you know, Best, so John, of luck. Best of luck, you guys. John, defend yourself a little bit with the, all right, so you get a whole laptop together and then the left USB port doesn't work. Well, you know, you, I buy stuff very cheap. I'm, I'm very, very cheap. I have a rule. <laughs> I, I have a rule. Like, I'll never pay more for a machine than I can sell it for broken, which means if someone comes to me with a 2013 MacBook Pro and says, oh, but there's a battery issue, my price is 100 bucks. You know, so I, I, I buy hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of machines very cheap. So if, if that port didn't work, well, guess what? I have so many more hundreds of them. 
and I'll just swap out the board. It's not a big deal. <laughs> a machine that's from 2009. There's a 13, you said. Oh, well, that one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> that one. But I, I buy from mostly from electronics recyclers, so they do tend to be older machines. You can send those to Chris. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris's address is. That's right. <laughs> to send everything. He, well, he accepts Gaylords, just minimum Gaylord quantity. So I have a question for you. So yeah. once everyone has their phones and they're replicating to the cloud, and there's a backup of everything on the cloud, right. what happens to that business model? Um, well, you know, you'd think that that would be the way it is right now. Because, you know, you get a new iPhone, let's set it up. And it's, it's really difficult to not have it back up to the cloud. I mean, it's, you know, like if you don't want to put a passcode on your phone, you have to like, no, no, seriously, like not now, like not ever. You, you know, it's hard to not have it backed up to the cloud. However, you know, we get called, I mean, Sunday was on the phone like a, a, a couple minutes ago and I hear her $100 for rush service on top of $200 for data recovery, you know, uh, because people, just don't know how to set it up. They think it's set up, but it's not. That's really common. You know, I, I thought it was set up, and now I realize that, that it's not, you know. So, um, but, but like anything, I think that, you know, data recovery is relatively new for me, and it's sort of seeing where a niche is that's unoccupied. And right now, all the data recovery guys are super gurus with clean rooms and getting spinning drives to spin again. And they're really awesome at taking Android devices and taking chips off and, you know, reading them. They're really awesome at USB drives. But nobody knows how to fix and get data off of iOS encrypted devices like iPhone 6. Nobody, nobody, nobody knows how. I mean, you know, I'm a mom in my dining room, which is another great thing. You know, we're working at home. <laughs> Super low rent. And, um, but, but, but you guys are the business. I'm not That's the business. Not true. I'm here. My stores are in Miami, making revenue right now. My store's making revenue right okay. now. And employees. And yeah. and half of them are here in this room. <laughs> 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 working right now. You know, like look at our laptop. We're working <laughs> super hard. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and the other case is, I mean, we do data recovery off yeah. iOS devices, mm -hmm. and so it's it's just part of our repair process. But I'm able to add on the fact of putting that information on their new device or selling them a new device. So there's that, that's to me just part of the process. I think that when you, I, I kind of agree with the cloud model. I mean, we sell cloud backup to every client that comes in with a computer that has the capability of having cloud backup. That's the easiest sale in the world. We sell them Backblaze or Carbonite or something for 80 bucks a year and they'll buy it in a heartbeat. Um, so I, I'm not saying, it, you know, to me data recovery is an interesting business when you're recovering data off of a of a SAN device and you're able to charge a client $25,000, dollars $40,000 for that data recovery. 300 bucks for pulling it off an iOS device, I do recognize the... It's super fun. You get to use your brain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and again, I, I'm, not, I'm not a purist. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a business owner. Yeah. And so for me, I, I'm interested in making money. <laughs> and so I think that I... I I absolutely agree with you. The feeling of telling somebody their data has been recovered successfully and you've restored the pictures of their kids first walking, there's yes. nothing better than that. That is, I think all three of us will agree, all four of us will agree on that 110%. That's an incredible feeling. Um, yes, but, it is. But I think that is somewhat of an anomaly compared to the times I get to say, you know, your device is fixed and it works. And that's just, it's not as good, but it's just as profitable. And it's pretty good. <laughs> But it's and sometimes really more profitable. Not. Let's take a look at this. Your device is fixed and it works. So what was the repair? Screen, let's say it's cracked screen. So let's, let's, let's do a hard one. Let's do like an iMac screen repair. The part is $199, $249. We charge $600 for the repair. Let's do an iPhone screen. Okay. So <laughs> iPhone screen. <laughs> let's do one that works for the, so, for the, for the course so of this conversation. <laughs> iPhone, iPhone screen, part. Hundred bucks. Oh, where are you buying your screen from? <laughs> well, you know, you, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I was talking to a gentleman outside who's refurbing his own screens, and he's had, he's getting six screens for nine dollars. 
So let's let's. let's <laughs> use, let, well, so, he's getting glass. Well, he's getting All glass, right, but he's, glass. he's refurbing his own screen. So. I'm putting in the nine dollar so. iPhone six screen right. for my retail customer, right. who I'm making happy, mm -hmm. and I'm charging him for a six. Yeah. One ninety nine. I'm char okay. I'm charging him one ninety nine. Here you go. So now I have made a profit of one hundred and ninety dollars. Right. So now I'm going to write the check out to my rent. I'm going to write the check out to the marketing. I'm going to write the check out to all the employees. And now the um, the customer oh, he called back. You know what? He's pissed because he just found out that he could have gone to the Apple Store for 109. And he wants ninety dollars back, right? And his old screen put back on mm -hmm. because you know you're totally taking advantage of him. Okay. And so you know now you got to refund him and no, no. put his old screen no. on, pay the people to do that, so he can go to Apple now. Okay. And then he's going to tell everybody you know that you guys are total scammies. You know, okay. and now you've got to go you know respond on Yelp and do all the you know customer right. service stuff you're talking about you know right. that's a lot of work and time right. I, you know? I guess it's the same amount of work and time as spending a couple hours trying to recover data that you never recover and can never charge the client for anything for <laughs> <laughs> no fix no fee is a huge terrible idea <laughs> I, can, I cannot totally imagine awesome. not charging a diagnostic. If I'm putting work into something, you're, you're giving me some money, whether, whether I get it or not. Here's the deal with that. Here, you know, the customer it's very comes it's in. Very, it's very noble. I will it, is, it is noble. But, it's not, but I don't do it to be noble. I do it because I don't like having to go respond to negative Yelp reviews, which, by the way, I've never had. They're all five stars. And, uh, and, and, and somebody. Yes. <laughs> Put your phone down. <laughs> but don't we all hate Yelp? Though I mean, that's a pretty well established. Yeah. So uh, you know the you know the the deal is that um, with no fix, no fee. You know, if if you if you come to me, probably not for data recovery, but for a, just a general board repair. And, and it goes something like this, like, I'd like for you to replace the charging port on my iPad Air, it's not charging. And, and, and I'm saying, well, does it have physical damage? No, but, you know, it's not charging, so obviously it's the charge port. And I'm like, I really think that you probably have, a, you're likely to have a deeper issue than that. Well, I just want, I just, you know, I can't do it, I want to pay you to just replace the charging port. Okay, you know, so I'll say, all right, I'm, you know, it's a four service though. You're asking me to get out my soldering iron. I'll do it. You know, I'll replace your charging port 70 bucks. So I replace the charging port. I give it back to you. I replace the charging port. It still doesn't charge. I told you that. I thought that it was going to have a deeper issue, but, you know, I did what you asked me to. So then how do you feel? A, you can feel like, well, you know, Jess is pretty, you know, pretty good, so I, she probably did a great job, and I'm an idiot because I should have <laughs> listened to her, and I should have known that it was going to have a deeper issue, and man, I wish I'd never done that. How could I have been so stupid? Or are you going to think, Jessa probably messed it up, you know? I mean, she's so busy, you know, I mean, she doesn't work, she works out her house, come on. She probably messed it up, and now she's charging me anyway because obviously it doesn't work. She messed it up. So it, it, if, if I do no fix, no fee, everybody's happy. I give it back to you, you're well, happy. But if the you customer comes, says, comes to you and says, fix my charging port, I, I say, what's the problem? They say, it's not charging. I say, so you want me to fix it because it's not charging, not the charging port. That's more of a customer communication thing than it is anything else. It's not about like, I don't, I don't fix the... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't fix the part. Like it's about it's. It, it, I'm here to. Uh, there's this phrase. Uh, I forgot who is. I think it's like a Jim Collins going. Sell the outcome. Right, so the yeah. outcome is I want my phone to charge. How yeah, you make absolutely. a charge? I can give a shit how you make a charge. Like right. <laughs> just make a charge. Make right. make when I plug this thing, the little light goes on, and I have more power. And right. so I, for for our customers, it, a lot of that is communicating with them. And and twenty to thirty percent of our customers think they can repair devices and it's important for us to educate them that they are not that they are in our store because they cannot right yeah. and so i think it's 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 really important that they recognize that on the onset so that, that when we're done they're like oh wow this place is so great and they stop thinking about that the same way that i feel about my cpa and my financial my my, my accounting i have no interest in accounting i just want to see a pnl and a balance sheet and i want to be able to read it correctly and i want the the background of all that to be done at his place of business and I'm happy to send him a nice check for it. Yes. 
we also do, you know, I mean, I don't do charge court for hire, you know. I do solutions. No yeah. fix, no fee solution. So it would be, it's, it's not, I'm never going to quote you for a charge court. It would be to quote you for whether or not it can make it work. Solutions, you know. Um, but some of the time, you know, it, 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 it's, it's no fix. It's my job, though, to just not take every repair. You know, like, like Chris was saying about devices, you know, like if you bring me your, you know, kind of like rusted out Teddy Rucks pin, you know, it's just <laughs> probably not worth it for me to take that thing apart and start, you know, putting the board in the, in the ultrasonic cleaner and try to go after it, you know. Um, well, it was custom programmed with all my kids' favorite sayings. Well, in that I case. Just want, I just want the data back. Okay. In that case, <laughs> let's do business. You know. <laughs> Teddy Rock's been daddy recovery. That's right, exactly. Flat fee, four ninety nine. So we we, <laughs> we so we spent some time today, and we've talked through kind of technically how refurbishing works. How I mean, we all kind of know how retail repair works. Can you explain a little bit of, of what your approach is to data recovery? Yes. Okay. So data recovery, uh, the niche that I'm working in is um, specifically iOS data recovery because no, not many people are doing it. And my approach to it is is nothing special other than try to make the phone work. And by try to make the phone work, try to get it to have power, display, and touch. And that's all you need in order to be able to, to extract the data natively. And this is unique to iOS devices, and it may be the trend of the future, but the way that the encryption works, it used to be with a lot of hard drives, the way you'd fix a hard drive is you'd swap out the board on the drive, and then you could get the drive to spin again. In extreme situations, you'd pull the platters off. With the Android devices and with some other flash devices, you can take the flash chip off the IC, transplant it onto a known good board, and it'll work there. But the iOS devices are more Yes, the I together. for an iOS device to, to say, you know, open Sesame, here is my data, here are the pictures, you have to have uh, three different chips that are all integrally married together to all be working in concert in order to sort of release that data. So ideas of sort of desoldering chips and putting them on a different board, you know, uh, really kind of don't work, you know, because the data, um, the data on just the data chip is really inaccessible without the companionship information from the other chips. So, so then it's sort of like, you know, what's the feasible way to get data? And the answer is to just get the board to sort of work natively. Should we take a question? Sure. Do we have a question? Uh, yeah. Can I just take over? Uh, yeah. Do, do we have the microphone? You guys have the... There we go. <coughs> uh, would it not be easier to get a working iPhone 5, pull the three chips off, stick them on the working iPhone 5, done? No. No, it doesn't work? Well, it's not easier. I mean, the, the challenge is the underfill around the, the yes. BGA. Oh. Right. Yeah. So the, the challenge with all of these sort of, you know, modern iPhones is this, you know, the miracle of underfill, which is fantastic and also the worst stuff on earth. You know, so, so <laughs> underfill is sort of the solution to this, like, tough problem where if you have a board and you stick one of those BGA chips on it, you know, the BGA chip has a ton of, you know, really fragile information on it that's now glued to the board with solder balls. And if you're playing Candy Crush and you can't get past level 25 and you throw it down, then it's really easy to sort of fracture those joints. So how could we solve that? I know. Let's inject a sort of black super glue underneath and encapsulate all those balls and then we'll sort of cure it like the dentist does to your teeth with a filling and now you've got this sort of rock hard kind of you know encapsulated chip that's fantastic for candy crush damage um, <laughs> that is horrible for um yeah that chip stopped working and we need to or or we need to take it off without damaging it transfer it to another board and also take off these other two chips also without damaging and we really it, it, it can't tolerate just the little nick you know so you have to scrape away and remove this black super glue <laughs> release the chip from the solder balls and the black super glue without damaging it so black see, super glue bad or it's in good see in my business we <laughs> would it. charge you 40 bucks and give you your phone back and say sorry we can't fix it <laughs> 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 uh, 
I don't, I, I don't value my time at, at zero. Um, you know, what I value is, um, you know, it, is that the solutions model works. So let's, let's take an example of why it works. Yes, I don't charge for things that I can't fix. You leave happy, you didn't pay. Things that are you know, relatively easy to fix, you guys watched me fix an iPad mini digitizer, I'm charging $69.99 for that job, and it takes me about five minutes. And I'm able to do that um, when the guys on eBay are literally charging $19.99 for that exact same job, because people like this brand and the reputation that I've built because I'm not charging you on this stuff. Then let's go over here. So then there's sort of the kind of like truly easy stuff. So solutions model, you know, my iPhone won't charge. It could be a U2 chip defect. It could be a charge port or battery or something else. I'm going to bill you a solution to that and that solution will be more expensive than either just the battery or the charge port alone. So if you were to give me a iPhone 5S with blue screen damage, most likely it's trace damage from t putting in the wrong screw and damaging the traces. I may be micro soldering traces that are the size of, you know, ant legs onto your phone and charging you, you know, I charge 140, no fix, no fee for that. However, you may be sending me a phone that really just requires a DFU mode restore. You're still paying 140 for that. You know, so, so the model Aver overall. Average, averages out. Yeah, so the model overall is successful, it works. You know, and it just, I don't, I don't you know. Average, <laughs> no, I think, that, I think there is an average. I just think that there is also a case when you can't fix it to say, well, I, I spent an hour doing this for you. It didn't work, and, and, and you agreed. Right, to, people and, don't like that. But I mean, you're well, absolutely I, right, and they all here, they all I, say I, yes at the get go. They all we our ho human hopefulness says, I you absolutely deserve to be paid for your time. I'm going to pay you fifty bucks minimum bench fee regardless. And I used to do that. The sort of like I called it complex diagnosis, and the, com and the complex diagnosis and investigative idea. repair. That's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do it anymore. Is that not what you did for your clients when you found what you No. Get get her the microphone. Yep. I think it's proper, it's a communication thing. You set the expectations sure. with your customers up front and then they're not disappointed but, in the end. But they really choose. prefer to pay zero. I'll I'll Everybody prefers to but pay hold zero. On, hold on, I hold mean, on. I would love to pay But different business zero. models work for different ways. I guarantee you b between our business model and her business model, we all want John's business model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, no way, man. I would because even though this ice pick to my face. <laughs> Honestly, okay, John, fine. yours sounds the least stressful. <laughs> uh, John, John, John has like... A, a brilliant business model, and it's totally different than anything you and I would come up with opening up, opening retail stores. But I think there is all, there's a case to be made for no fix, no fee. If if I had if I was like if I didn't want to spend a lot on a particular repair and had the option between spending fifty bucks for you maybe to fix your phone and her zero, mm -hmm. and and you had the same reputation online, I would go over here. You would lose my business, and you would lose my repeat business if you. If she was able to repair the device, which most likely she was, because she's kind of awesome. Right. But there is definitely a case that you could, you could. I think you could make a case, especially because you are an expert in your field, to say my time is valued. Maybe not at fifty bucks. Maybe it's valued at twenty-five bucks. But that twenty-five bucks, maybe it's fifty bucks. It's yeah. fifty bucks. 50. I would have seventy-five dollars. So, but here's the thing. You know, uh, it, the model doesn't work if I'm going to say. Come all Come, yeah, of course. devices. <laughs> okay. I will only charge you for what I can fix. Oh, Teddy Ruxpin, I just fixed it. But then that's you know, terrible because you're pushing away the customer from believing in repair, and I don't, I, I personally don't like that concept either. She's not. She's being selective about the devices she wants but to repair. She's because personally being selective. As a repair shop, though, you would think that you'd want to take in everything you can. No! 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 Abort! 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 No, wait. I, I guess, I guess okay. we're just a little so more adventurous. Right abort. Please forward that lead for that iPod fourth generation abort. straight up to her and we'll just send it abort. right to her. Okay, well, an iPod fourth generation, then that's when you communicate with your customer again right. and you make the sale in a different way. Upgrade right. them to an iPod 5. Well, but iPod like, 6. Like Chris right. repairs smart Wait, but TV. you're still not turning away the business. 
You're taking in the customer, either or way. You're not telling them on the phone, no, I can't help you. But you're disappointed. No, 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 you no, you already know you're going to disappoint them. Oh, I mean, actually, well, our, 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 it our, no okay. Fix, no fix. okay, let me put it a better way. Our diagnostic fee, our, our diagnostic fee, it's forty nine ninety nine. If you decide to get the repair done, then there's no cost for the diagnostic fee. You yeah, just pay for the repair. That, yeah, we so all, that yeah. iPod that I couldn't fix, that forty nine ninety nine would go into the new iPod 5 that they were buying for me. Sure. And now I took the sale. I didn't turn away the customer. And I kept them Did you know repair. before you accepted the repair that you, there's no way you're going to be able to fix that device? I'm a salesman. Uh, that's kind of crooked -y. I'm a, I'm a I'm, salesman and I'm, I'm here to I'm a businessman too and, and he'll to, tell you I'm like a super capitalist. Are you not? If somebody is, comes to you, you're going to create a solution for them, right? That's why you... If I found out as a customer that... If I went to, te to, to Jessa... The only after, way you're going to know something can't be fixed is if you open on, it up and try. Let me just try. finish what right. I have to say. So <laughs> if I went to Jessa after and she told me there's no way anybody can repair this device and I know because I have... 67 five-star reviews that tell me that I can repair this device, I would, I would trash you on social media because you didn't give me the right impression as a business owner. You weren't being, well, you were I mean, borderline again, being unethical. Well, I you don't know if you can repair something until you actually open it up and spend your time on it. You can't, you can't just look so at it. So send her the... So we, I think so this is... We a, don't, we don't so do that. She's right, she's from a... Yeah, so let's take Sunday right. behind you. Pass it out, because I think Hi, she's Sunday. got a response to this. Hi. I just want to point out the fact the no fix, no fee is how much do you spend and do you spend and everybody else spend on training for your employees or a furthering lot. your education? A lot. Jessa, every no fix, no fee that comes in, she knows when she chooses that job, she goes, I don't know that. I don't know if I can fix it. Yeah, bring it in. And those hours that she spent working on it and she wasn't able to fix it, clue her into the next one that comes in. And then she has it. You know, I said the other day, it's like an episode of CSI where she should have like the strings and the pins and <laughs> all. Like, you can see the way her mind, I mean, she's a different, the way that you've taught yourself, and you teach yourself every single thing that you've done. You've used your resources. And so every, every time, like, as business manager, if I see her putting five hours into a job and then going, oh, I, it's, I know that that's Board. okay. That time is well spent because the next one that comes in, she's going to see some similar pattern and go, I got it. And now she's going to be the first one who has that solved, and we can start bringing them in. And then she makes a video, and then we have 50 of them coming in. So sometimes it's not great for me, but I really value the, that approach because she's, I think it's different for you because you are a researcher by heart. You. I think that you have that business model, like you have to be very sensitive and, and having someone that, that sort of, Balances your curiosity as a researcher yes, and, and what the business yeah. needs. And I call is time of death yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, okay, abort, time, abort, that's abort, it. Abort, time abort, of abort, death, yeah. walk away. <laughs> but I, I, I think your approach to doing no fix, no fee, of course the customers love it, and you're furthering yourself and the business. I mean, here's she, the thing. She got a raise I, after that? <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's so the there. thing. You know, um, I, I used to do exactly what you're describing complex diagnosis. And I would get, you know, like a batch of boards, and it would be like, fix this one, fix this one, dead, 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 dead. Okay, so now your yield customer, you know, is going to be, you know, two, you're getting two good boards back, and then I'm charging you four $50 fees, so now your overall package for two boards. Is that for business customers, or is that what you're switching to, or are you talking about? I'm, I've moved away from this, so this would be something that I would do for, you know, I mean, most of my customers are other shops, yeah. um, you know, and so, you know, charge, I mean, of course they recognize that they can't ask me to sit here and with a whole afternoon in a schematic and try to fix some hundred dollar phone, you know, and then, they, of course you're going to pay for my time, but people don't like it, you know, so what's better for me is to say, I'm not going to address that, I'm not going to address that, too open-ended, too open-ended, I'll fix this and I'll fix this, and so now I push those off the table, and I repair these two, and then it makes sense for you as a business. You know? Well, the key here is specialization. Versus a personal customer, because business customers are streamlined totally different in sure. sale, in the repair, in the yeah. bulk order, in the diagnosis. And I guess that's probably the difference between like a home-based business and an actual retail location. I fire customers all the time. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. On the yeah. plane. Well, and I think I think this underlies uh, that you know there's a there's a question of specialization yeah. and what yeah. portions of the market you're addressing. Let's uh, let's give Sunny a shot here. I run two retail stores that we offer no fix, no fee 
services, and it worked out really well. You know, How so come? just because you want to keep them as happy as possible, and they're gonna come back regardless. You know what I mean? I just I just thought of something actually. Do you do computer repairs at all? We do kind of like MacBook motherboard repair. But you we, do you know. computer repairs? Yes. yes. You so do no fix no fee on computer repairs? Computers and iPhones. And uh, okay. we fix iPhones like pretty much for free just so they can bring See, in the I'd computers. Probably, I'd probably consider doing it on iOS devices and things like that just because a diagnosis happens so quickly. But with a computer, it could take us a day to diagnose something. And so for me to not have some sort of... I like the customer having skin in the game. I don't know what it is. Like I like the fact that... like. I think it, 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 I think it gives a little bit of credibility to our business. And then you could say that, that no fix, no fee does as well. Like, I, I, I'm, in it, I'm in it because if I fix it, you're paying me. Right. But at yeah. the same time. I mean, but that's, like, seriously. Like, they're like, yeah. wow, you are, like, not getting paid if you don't fix it. That's pretty awesome. But I think there's a. Not like, oh, that guy's getting paid either way. He doesn't well, care. I think that he probably messes What would be course. very curious to me is, like, taking Sonny's business and mine and tracking revenue over time versus the diagnostic check or something like that and seeing, like, if there is there a revenue stream in diagnostic checks? Like, I probably generate, I don't know, 1000 bucks a month on diagnostic checks. Like that's thousand bucks a month. I didn't have. I didn't have otherwise. But that's that's but time that's is twelve k a year. But that's thousand bucks worth of pissed off people. No, they're not pissed off. Right. Absolutely not. They're not. No, 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 no. Definitely not. That's that, like, that's totally just, disagree that, with that. That is, that is totally like, disagree. I mean, I've had just part of human nature. I've had customers that have walked in and and paid a diagnostic check, and and at the end we tell them, listen, this computer is not salvageable. This is not a good idea to repair this computer. Go invest in another computer. Come back. And we'll credit the thirty-five dollars that you paid for a diagnostic check towards a transfer, a data transfer. Right, that stuff makes sense. And the, so that that, uh, but I do, I very I mean I couldn't even tell you the last time I got pushed back on a diagnostic check where someone is like, well, no, nobody's no. gonna say no. But here's the thing: let's go down to Las Vegas, stand at the roulette table, and we're gonna watch everybody place bets. Every single one of them is hopeful when they put their money down. I'm gonna win. And then let's talk to all the people that didn't win and ask them. How many of you guys uh, wish you had that fifty dollars? That's a bad. Bag? That's a bad analogy because because they're not um, they're not gambling with my business. They're trusting the most credible repair shop in Miami, Florida. No, they so, are they are hopeful that there's. This, it's not no. about you. It's that their device is either fixable. But or they not. came to me. They didn't come to any of the other three thousand vendors they could have gone to. They came to me because of my reputation and my brand, right. and and they trust. Right. That it's not a crapshoot. That that the highest probability of me getting this data back is paying this guy fifty bucks, and usually we're able to achieve. And if we're not, we'll explain why. We'll give them. Right. A, we'll give them a, a, a diagnostic report. You know. Yeah. So, so I think I think John is over here saying, right, you know, down, all of this stress about right. customer perspective. Right now. You know. Just ready. to be clear, I get paid for every laptop I sell. <laughs> 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 so, John, like, <laughs> tell me about your customer review experience. Like, he's waiting. He's waiting. He's like, please give me that. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about your Yelp experience, John. I don't know if I have Yelp. <laughs> All I care about are my, you know, I have five primary customers who I've dealt with for, you know, most of five or seven years. And uh, I mean, I, I know I can sound kind of harsh towards customers in general, but I'm, you know, I, 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 I treat my customers well, my wholesale customers, and, uh, you know, that, that's, that's the relationship I, also, I, I care about most. And also the recyclers. I mean, you have to be nice to recyclers, because recyclers, um, you know, they have, they have their choice of who they sell their stuff to. Uh, so you, you know, a lot of people make the mistake of going to recyclers, saying like, well, I'm the customer, and they're, they're, they're selling me stuff, so I can make demands. It, that's not that. That's not how it is. You have to. I, I, you have, I treat my customers. I treat my recyclers like they're my, my customers, and that helps you build ongoing relationships with them. So, um, but again, it's you know I have five relationships over here, five relationships over here. Make sure that those are solid. Sure. If I, if I had ten clients, that would be perfect. <laughs> that would be. That would be brilliant. No, I, again, I'll repeat what I said at the beginning. Question. Yeah. Did, oh, I'm curious. Do we have a question about about refurb? Because uh, I don't want to <coughs> necessarily dwell on the no fix, no fee discussion. Yes. 
Uh, I'm just curious, John, why you don't like, I understand you want to keep it one side, but is it simple with going direct to viewers? Like, like, why don't you go direct with the consumer? Do you not feel like you're cutting out some of your profit margins and you just not, don't want to scale your business bigger or deal with the headaches of the consumers? Or? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, you can. The, the, the business model with the two sides, like I mentioned, is very modular. You could mix it up any way you want. Um, personally, I've just found that um, by selling like 10 in a box and shipping two or three boxes a day uh, and eliminating individual transactions, you know, I would have to package those up in 30 different boxes. I would be dealing with customer service for 30 different machines. Uh, you know, hire someone to do that for you? Yeah, like, exactly. So it, 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 it takes more of your time and because you have less time, you're pumping out less volume. Um, but it can't be done. I mean, I know there are people in, who do what I do who take who skim the top twenty percent quality wise off of what they produce and sell it on Amazon where they can get a premium for their you know their best best machines. So people yeah. like Michael's. <laughs> Maybe so. So how do you handle cosmetic uh, issues? You're selling white MacBooks right. that scratch really easily. Um, well, the best customers are the ones who will buy uh, you know CD grade stuff. So I found I have some good customers who, for whatever reason, don't mind the um, the, the damaged stuff, um, which is great because you 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 produce so much that is not you know grade A, um, grade A stuff you can sell to anyone any second of the day, but you know grade B C D um, you have to look for those customers, and it's important to find those customers because there's just so much volume of, of material. Another question? This guy. Go, go for it. Go for it. Grab the microphone here. I exactly do similar what you do, no fee, uh, no fix. Um, but that is just a very small percentage of my business. But that brings a lot of like a, a doing a marketing and instead of spending right. marketing. Yeah. I would. Uh, making yeah. But how much is your business of like? Uh, maybe mine is only less than five percent. No, no, no fees. Yeah, I mean, very small amount of people. Uh, how much is your percentage of 100%. time? No, but what no, percent no, I mean, do you not like you cannot target. fix? How many, what percent do I do? The, do I do no fix? Um, Charity. <laughs> yeah, what Charity. percent of your work is <laughs> pro bono? <laughs> it's it's secretly very low. You know, I mean, it sounds like oh, we do no fix, no fee, which sounds like we do no fix all the time, but we but we really don't. And the reason why is because I I I I when I hear about a repair, you need to tell me about the history of the device and problem, and then I will match it to my experience base, and I will generate a probability that it's X, Y, or Z, and then I will quote you a no fix, no fee solution, and that probability is probably 95% that I know what the problem is and that I can fix it profitably. And if your description of the problem does not match my sort of known kind of profit center problems that I've already figured out, <coughs> then it goes into these other two categories. Category one is, oh, hell no. And that, that is like a low value device, very open-ended troubleshooting, um, I, I, it, it would not be worth my time, even if successful. So that is, I can't help you. And then the middle category is, I may not be able to fix it. So let's say 50-50 on whether or not I can fix it. I don't have any idea, but I'd like to see the problem. Because as I see more and more of these problems, that's how I start to see patterns, and that's what sort of develops up another solution then that is, turns into a 95% thing. And that's just sort of how I work. I think that I'm pretty sure that I'm the only one that can repair iPhone 6 uh, long screw damage and, uh, and 6 plus. And by me, I mean Mark. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> we worked that up for a long time, you know, really, really researching that problem. When we first identified it uh, on December 25th a year ago, and, and now, you know, there's still no one that advertises that, you know. So we, I think I saw five phones before I saw one. But you're able to be super specialized, which is how you're Right, exactly. You're yeah. You have to just see yeah. where the niche is and fill it. Usually you okay. know at the beginning that it's most of the time, I know at the beginning something is yeah. possible or not. Yeah. yeah, if you're like, my iPad 
mini. It's got like this, uh, you know, like we just did a screen replacement. Now the touch doesn't work at all. You know, 100% of the time you pulled the pins out of the connector. It's not going to be some long BIC or some long, you know, rock. Let's get that. <laughs> you know. So uh, wrapping up, uh, let's give the last word to John and then Ivan. Um, well, I would just say, you know, again, this is a, a model worth um, considering. You know, if you haven't figured out exactly what your business model um, is going to be, you know, definitely consider refurbishing instead of just sort of having that knee-jerk reaction to, um, you know, to do a customer-facing model. Because you, you just heard all the nonsense that that, that <laughs> will put you through. Um, so, you know. It's the meanest um, thing John has ever said to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I say, you know, make your work life simpler, make twice as much money, and have a lot of free time for other activities. You know, why Like not? art. Yeah. Why, like, like art. art. <laughs> art. That's right. That's art. Yes. Ivan? Um, so I think that business models are very interesting to me, so this conversation is very interesting to me. And just like when I met John, I was like, ah, this is completely different than what I do. There's very easy mathematical ways to study business models. They're called financial models. You can hire someone for 100 bucks an hour that will build you a financial model of your business, and you'll know a lot more about what you do. So when I built our tech bar financial model, it's a good business at two stores. It's a great business at five stores. It's an unbelievable business at 10 stores. And, and the repair store model scales much better than uh, a, a passionate expert. I don't need passionate experts. I need level one trained technicians and I can replicate them in mass and create a scalable business that sells at a much higher multiplier than a, a unique expert business, so. All right. And, and it's, it's way better. <laughs> Just a very, very brief. Very briefly, um, that would be true. My business is certainly not a unique expert, you know, but we occupy a niche where, you know, I outsource to multiple really high level people and it allows us to serve the entire world, you know, and, and people ship us stuff from all over the world. So, you know, we don't have to have multiple locations. We outsource, we build a team. It's a very diverse team that communicates online. We can, we're still working here at the conference. And it's, you know, it's, it's absolutely fantastic and you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there you have it. I think this has been a dynamic uh, discussion. Uh, I, I certainly learned a lot. I, I think it's, it's really nice to see models and I, I can very easily imagine a business that blended combinations of all three of your business models. I don't think that these are exclusive at all. Let's put, get together and make our own big three-yard business. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys very much. Round of applause to us. Uh...